It's a Wonderful Life is one of those movies I never forgot about since I first saw it. For the longest time, it was just that Christmas movie that I watched with my family every year on NBC. It wasn't until a few years ago when I watched it again and saw what a truly amazing film Capra made. If you look at things surface level, it's A Wonderful Life is not really that special or stands out too much. The story is really just a man living his life, being presented with decisions and the choices he makes. But it's that which makes It's a Wonderful Life such an amazing movie. To sum up, the character of George Bailey is what makes the movie so good. Often, Citizen Kane is hailed as the greatest character study in film. And although I love Kane, to me, It's a Wonderful Life is the greatest character study. The movie shows George as a kid, a young man, and an older man, but what happens at these stages in his life makes George such a wonderful character. Oftentimes, I have seen comparisons between George Bailey and Jefferson Smith from Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. In a way, I can see why people make the comparisons. Both are played by Jimmy Stewart and in films by Frank Capra. But I have to say, George is really nothing like Mr. Smith. George is a true hero, like Mr. Smith, but Capra, in a really interesting move, chooses to show what the cost of being such a good person can be. He does this right from the start of the film. George saves his brother Harry from drowning. What heroic act. Well, what happens? George loses hearing in one of his ears. George chooses to keep the building alone out of the hands of Mr. Potter. And what happens? He's forced to give up his dreams of leaving Bedford Falls. Finally, George helps countless people at the building alone. And what happens? He's going to be arrested. Again, a very ballsy choice to show your audience there is a cost to being such a heroic person. But being such a good person like George doesn't mean your life is so bad. In fact, many times it can offer you the greatest thing. Love. The relationship between George and Mary is one of my favorites in the film. A truly charming old school romance that you really only see in these movies. I love it as children when Mary secretly whispers in George's ear. Is this the year you can't hear on? George Bailey, I'll love you till the day I die. But it really starts at the dance. I'm not really sure what the best scene of love at first sight is, but this one is a contender. The way Capra shows them just looking at each other as if the rest of the world didn't matter is something beautiful. Which, of course, is followed up by the walking home scene. The conversation is really two people falling in love. What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Barry. I'll take it. And again, this scene shows how kind of tragic George's life is. Of a night... When he is falling in love, his father has a heart attack and passes away. The romance between George and Mary builds up to their first kiss, which is greatly set up. Mrs. Bailey tells George to go see Mary, and he chooses to go into town. This moment shows how resistant George is to falling in love with Mary, because he knows if that happens, he will most likely never leave Bedford Falls. Which is why when he does come to the house, he's kind of a jerk to marry. But of course, he can't hold back his feelings anymore. Uh, will you tell that guy I'm giving him the chance of a lifetime, do you hear? The chance of a lifetime! He says it's the chance of a lifetime. Now you listen to me. I don't want any plastics, I don't want any ground floors, and I don't want to get married ever to anyone, you understand that? I want to do what I want to do. And you're... And you're... Oh, Mary. Oh, George, George, George. Mary. All these things in the film are fantastic, but I'd be foolish to talk about this film without mentioning the villain, Mr. Potter. One of my favorite on-screen villains, he is the exact opposite of George. Whereas George is always thinking of helping others, Mr. Potter's thinking of himself. 
when George is being kind and generous, Mr. Potter is wondering how he can make more money off the backs of people. A great villain does not always have to present a physical challenge to the hero. They have to be a roadblock to the hero doing heroic things, which is what makes Mr. Potter such a nasty villain. But of course, I need to talk about the ending. When George is pushed to his limits and wants to kill himself, the power Stuart shows in these scenes is amazing to watch. George, of course, does not kill himself, but is instead shown a world where he never existed. And it's watching this scene when you really understand the title of the film. The movie doesn't present life as being perfect. People aren't always going to be nice, and even if you do good things, you will have struggles. But what it says is you make a mark on everyone you interact with. So try to make a good mark. Live life trying to help others. And sure, you'll struggle. But at least you're a good person. And eventually you'll be rewarded. Mary did it, George. Mary did it. She told some people you were in trouble with it. They scattered all over town collecting money. Didn't ask any questions. Just said, George in trouble. And tell me you didn't have a It's a Wonderful Life is one of my favorite movies. I hope this video has shown you why I love the film so much. And maybe if you haven't seen it in a while, I'm inspired you to watch it again and see how truly of a wonderful film it is. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked this. I know it was a different type of video than I normally do. Um, please, in the comment section, let me know. Do you like um, me doing these kind of one-person video essay type things? Did you maybe miss the, you know, me and a guest talking about a movie? Um, now remember, this is the last episode of the Movie Fandom Show for the year. Uh, I know this video might be going up a little early for some people given the Christmas movie subject matter but eh, you know I just have you know some stuff I have to handle before the end of the year and so I just want to be sure to get the video up now but um I really want to say thank you to everyone who has watched the movie fandom show for this year that I've been doing it I really enjoy doing for you guys the the movies I've been able to see that I may have never seen if the you know, if a guest didn't bring it on and talking about some of my favorite films, it it really, um, it was a great time for everyone who watched this show. Thank you. For everyone who shared the videos, thank you, guys. Um, I, I really just can't say anything, but thank you. And uh, again, click like, comment, share this video, and remember to keep loving movies. Take care.